In this video, I'm going to give you my opinion on every trinket that I might use as a Blood Death Knight. This is not a guide. I'm not going to tell you how to use the trinkets. I'm not going to tell you what trinkets you should use. I'm not going to tell you how to play your character. There is no right or wrong here. I'm just going to give you all my opinions on all these different trinkets. The way you should use this video is you should look at this information and say, huh, well, if this is what he thinks about this trinkets, how should that impact my opinion? You should use my opinion to create your own opinion. I will not be telling you what opinion you should have. So here we go. Let's take a look at every trinket in the game after extensive testing. I should have made this video a long time ago. A lot of people have been asking about this video a long time ago. And the reason I didn't is because I, I still felt unsure. And I'm glad I waited because there's a couple things that came up in kind of the, the last hour of BFA that I'm glad I looked at. So anyway, uh, we're going to start with the Taldazar and there's only the one trinket, Razan's Gleaming Eye. Okay, so if you watch the equivalent video that I made earlier, the, the few that I made earlier in the expansion, uh, you remember Razan's Gleaming Eye was looked at as, as really good. And this is kind of endemic of the situation that we've had as a Blood Decay over the course of the expansion, but uh, a lot of people have cycled their interests in haste procs and, uh, you know, big procs in general on trinkets. Uh, so this one I still think is kind of like a good middle ground. I think it's one of those things that you look at this and you think, do you really like this trinket? If so, like, do you, do basically, do you think th th another trinket is better than Razan's Gleaming Eye? If so, then it's probably a good trinket. If you think it's worse than Razan's Gleaming Eye, then it's probably a bad trinket. That's just kind of how I've looked at it throughout the entire expansion. Uh, but right now, haste procs are kind of out. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different places to get haste procs, and I don't feel like using a trinket slot is going to be very valuable to it. But of course, you know the reason we're making this video is because you might get this on a 475. You might think, hmm, maybe it's worth it. Um, but, you know, if you're if you're still running a haste build, uh, which you know something that I did for a long time, uh, it could be good. It could be good. You know, the, there's there's the possibility to get a lot of haste from a lot of different sources in VFA. So that's one of them. Uh, so now we'll go to Freehold, no trinket in Freehold. King's Rest has Machimba's Ritual Bandages, okay? Uh, this one is another one that I talked a lot about early in the expansion, but uh, it's just kind of a weaker version of some other trinkets that are out there right now. Um, again, if you get a 475, uh, you, you might want to think about using it, but realistically, I don't think I would use it even, like, no matter what circumstances I had, because it's a one and a half minute CD. I don't really... Uh, it's just, it's it's longer than another trinket that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And it's just going to do less healing because of that. Like, there's a couple trinkets in the game that are like this. Longer CDs with, like, medium shields. But I don't feel like that supports Blood DK very well. You don't need a, like, m like a medium-sized shield on a long CD. Ideally, you'd want, like, a, maybe a, a, like a small shield on a short CD. So we're going to get just that in another trinket in the future. Now, Operation Mechagon, uh, we'll talk about this trinket first, okay? Um, this trinket I, I've used almost never. I have it. Uh, I, I thought, you know, I, I thought maybe it'd be interesting to take on, uh, you know, with the um, Shexel Vaz, right? The weapon from, uh, from Mount, Heroic, Mythic, etc. Uh, you know, I thought maybe there'd be some gaming there. I literally never even tried that. Uh, and, and the reason I never even tried it was because Jix's opinion of the trinket was that it was not, like, it was just... It, it went so quick. The way it works is receiving more than 10% of your health from a physical damage effect will remove one stack of platinum plating. So like that's like immediately. The second you pop it, you start losing stacks. Uh, so you basically never have it. And it's a two-minute CD. So like, yeah, the only possible way I could ever see myself using this trinket is if it gave like an enormous amount of armor right for Shexel Vaz if you use it at the right time. Uh, so you're basically trying to take like a mediocre... DPS approach <laughs> to using a shit trinket that doesn't do anything, you know? Like, I, I don't know. I've not used a trinket. Maybe you guys have. Let me know if you have. Uh, but I can't see this being very good. And it's just way too... Two-minute CD. If it was a one-minute CD or something like that, maybe it would be better. But uh, So Shrine has the Briny Barnacle, which is a relatively famous trinket over the course of BFA. Um, it's, it's seemingly good for, like, a lot of AoE, like, persistent AoE. Uh, it, dealing 1,000 whatever damage every 8 seconds. If the target dies with Choking Brine, it splashes to all targets in 8 yards. So, like, this is kind of good if you have, um, from what I've seen, if you have, like, this a wave of adds kind of coming in. Um, so it has, like, some value in Mythic Plus. 
Uh, I think early in the expansion, a lot of people uh, were using it. I've seen a lot of people using it in Radiance as Blood DK for just pure DPS. Uh, but we're getting to the point now where we're going to start talking about this pure DPS situation. And for me, uh, if you want to do the pure DPS, again, not going to tell you how to play your character. Uh, if you want to do the pure DPS thing, I mean, you could do worse than this trinket for sure. It's all right. Uh, like if you have like a you know 475 one of it or something like that, might be a decent option. But I think there's better options out there, even you know for pure DPS. And for me personally, I never do pure DPS unless I'm doing keys that are very easy, keys that I don't ever feel like I'd be in danger in. And I yeah I, I almost never do that. So um, okay, temple. Now here's the famous one. All right, this is the this is the pure DPS one. This one is extremely powerful, okay? A lot of people look at this as the go-to trinket for five mans. Of course, they're playing in a way that they only care about maximizing their offense for whatever reason. I don't play that way. I never, uh, I've never felt like offensive trinkets were better than defensive trinkets because there's so much, so much value that I feel like I can get from certain defensive trinkets, but this is one that you should consider regardless of if you like offense or defense because it does so much offense that it's almost you know it's an undeniably strong trinket like you know in in the way that like if you pop this it's going to shorten the pack so much that you're going to have less time that you need to defend yourself during that pack of course it's a two minute cd and it's pretty it's pretty poor on bosses let's put it that way so you know about half of your uses are going to be relatively weak you know and i mean that that's kind of the problem with the offensive trinkets is it is a lot of times the bosses are the hard part and people still use it. I, I just, I don't really see it as often. So, uh, but yeah, if you get like a really big pull, like that first pull in freehold or, you know, it's just a teaming week or something like that. This trinket is extremely strong. Now I haven't used it a lot recently, but what I remember from my uh, extreme attempts at using it in season two and three was you cannot parry, dodge, anything like that. Uh, now that's probably worse for like a warrior or something like that. Obviously as a DK, it's not that big a deal. I, I think I've heard people say that, you know, there's enough of a downtime in the DK rotation anyway, that you should be able to play around the fact that you'd be channeling and not able to do any death strikes or any parries or any defense for a couple seconds. You know what I mean? Um, now for me, like I said, I don't, I don't ever use this trinket, but if you can if you can maximize this trinket and you feel like you know especially if you're doing a dungeon like freehold a lot of high volume trash maybe mother load on not bolstering uh yeah it's actually extremely strong damage and i've seen people do like you know 15 plus maybe 20 some percent of their damage with this trinket so it's a very very strong choice if you can get it now one thing i'll also bring up about this trinket a lot of other damage dealers like it too so um this actually kind of came up a couple weeks ago me and jix were running keys together he was playing havoc he can't get this trinket it's a strength trinket i got it and he asked me for it i gave it to him so apparently, you know, Demon Hunters and maybe even like other Agi, I don't know who else might want it, but it's that strong. Like, do, do, like does that does that resonate now that <laughs> a Demon Hunter DPS who cannot use strength wants this trinket over other trinkets in the game? So a very strong trinket. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, anyway, the mother load, uh, big red button. Now this is one that I liked a lot in the early expansion when there was very few good trinkets out there. Um, because I felt like it was good, like it, it doesn't do good AOE, but it does good damage, like period. No matter what you're fighting, a single boss, multiple targets, it's going to do decent damage. And on the pull, you know, especially because it can crit, I felt like it was a really good on the pull thing. Uh, especially for threat. Blood DK has had some problems with threat this expansion. It's gotten worse over time because of the, uh, you know, propensity for Twilight Devastation and, and huge, you know, almost huge scaling for some DPS classes. So this, I always thought like this was a good idea, but again, two minute CD nowadays, way better ways to deal with threat. Trinket just seems like a no go to me. Uh, even if I was trying to focus on uh, offense in five mans, uh, I don't think this would be one that I would pick. Obviously there's just way better ones out there nowadays, but at some point it was pretty interesting. And if you get it, uh, just be aware that it does a lot of, you know, if that crits, it does a lot of you know, a single global worth of damage is quite high. I don't think there's much that will compare to that. Um, so anyway, uh, now there's two in under route, which is interesting. Uh, these trinkets have been historically, um, they were very uh, a very famous trinket. Let's put it this way. So, uh, Vial of Animated Blood, we'll start with this. I have seen some DKs use this, like at the high end. 
Uh, and the reason I think they use it is because they start to value mastery more than I'm, I'm like, I'm surprised they do. Um, but I think it's also because it's, it's a large amount of strength. So of course, strength has many facets of defense as well as offense. And if you pop it at the right time, it could help you tremendously. So uh, I think uh, it's not really a trinket that I would ever think about using. And the reason I don't like it is because it's got a one minute and 30 second cooldown. That's really awkward. Um, I try to avoid trinkets with not one or two minute CDs because I feel like uh, if I want to line it up with rune weapon, I have to use it relatively poorly. Uh, but it, it might be so much strength that you wouldn't even want to line it up with rune weapon. I did use it a lot in season two, so that's the last time I used it seriously. I don't know if I even own a season four version of it, but for me, it's just kind of a no-go. I don't really like mastery. If it had versatility on it or even haste, I probably would have used it a lot more this expansion. But yeah, for me, I don't think I would use that trinket. But Lingering Spore Pods, I think, is, is a criminally underrated trinket. And I think it confuses a lot of people, and I'm going to tell you why, okay? Um, so the first thing is it's a dungeon trinket. So I think a lot of people slept on dungeon trinkets for a long time. Um, and, and it was just because, like, for the most part, they were really undertuned for the first, like, maybe, you know, 40% of the expansion. At some point, I can't remember exactly when this happened. I think it was at the end of season two. They buffed the hell out of every trinket, like just the the the, the number on every trinket of a certain type, and th this is of that type. Like they just buffed every trinket in the game, like an item level increase to the trinket without changing the item level to it. Basically, you understand what I mean? So this is one of them. Uh, it's now a lot more um, appropriate, I feel like, and it, it does something very interesting. So it does a lot of damage. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it does not do a lot of damage, but it does do some damage. So like, it's not going to do zero damage over the course of a dungeon. It does very, 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 very little compared to any other thing in the game. Like, even like a strength proc would probably equate to more damage than this does. But it does do something, okay? But the main thing that I use it for is it's a very consistent helper for self-healing. And over the course of the expansion, I've always looked at playing a Blood Decay as how can I solo this dungeon? I feel like this is the trinket that you would take if you were trying to solo a dungeon because it has the potential to like very consistently help you self heal. The problem is it's gonna proc a lot when you're at full health, okay? So I've stopped using this trinket because of that. Like 40% of the time it's proccing, I'm not needing the healing. So instead we've gone to a trinket when we do uh, worry about our self healing that has more agency over like my use case you know what i mean so uh, it's a great trinket i really like this trinket i still would use this trinket on any situation that i'm unsure of my own survivable uh survivable output you know like um i do it every once in a while on a progression raid fight that like i think i remember using it on the first time we started doing shadhar because i felt like i was you know struggling to keep up with all the mechanics calling them out as a raid leader um, and this trinket really helped me with that it actually did really good but like for reference for the longest time, I used this trinket and another trinket that I would consider to be a very good, like the trinket I've been talking about here, it's it's a raid trinket, and they both were neck and neck. They were doing the same amount of healing, very, very close, and that other trinket I can use exactly when I want to use it, right? So the fact that Spore Pods was overhealing most of the time I was using it, and the trinket I was, the other trinket I'm talking about was never overhealing because it's an absorb, you know, like almost always getting full value out of it. The fact that they were doing almost the same healing to me really signifies that it's a very good trinket. And it was doing, like, you know, a little bit of damage, too. So I think this trinket is definitely a, it's a good friend of mine, and I've liked it. It's probably the trinket I've looked for the most this expansion. Now, Jess's Howler. Late in the game, we find out some thoughts about Jess's Howler. We were talking about this the other day. Um, we were talking about how the verse amp meta has taken over. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm talking about, of course... Uh, you know, verse uh, the, the corruptions that increase the amount of versatility you gain from all sources, right? Now, this is the source. This is the place that gives you versatility. So, uh, some I think it was Jix brought it up. It was talked about in Raid a little bit, and uh, you know, it was said like, "Hey, whatever, whatever happened to that trinket that used to re really be overpowered and you got a lot of versatility from it?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, Jess's Howler. I got one of those with the socket in my bag. So let's take a look at it." And I'm gonna tell you here, it does benefit from the first amp so you see the number there is a uh, 1.5 1500 uh, i have like 
think I have like 20, maybe 30% verse amp right now. So that increases it to like 2000 something. It does increase the versatility I gain from this source. Unfortunately, what it does not do is increase the versatility others gain from my trinket. This is what I was hoping. This is what Jick said. He said if it did do that, then it would have to be an overpowered trinket, right? Like, there's another trinket that we're going to talk about here in the raid that everybody uses because it does the exact same thing. It's on, like, a seemingly, like, a higher budget because of this. And I thought, you know, if this trinket does that too, then it must be overpowered. Uh, but it does not. We tested it out this weekend. Uh, so the way it works is you're meant to, like, motivate your allies as well. And then for every ally you hit, you gain extra verse. So anything you gain from the trinket is amplified. But unless they're using verse amp too, it will not motivate them. 99% sure that's how it's meant to work. Um, but yeah, I tried it all over the place and it did not seem to buff, uh, depending on the verse amp, it did not change how much it gave them. But still, this is a interesting trigger because it's a two minute CD. Who else has two minute CD? Is this a, is a famous class? I'm not gonna tell you. You're gonna have to figure it out for yourself. There's a famous class that has a two minute CD. And I, I don't know, man, I don't know. I was thinking, hey, it's good for me. I like, it's like another, you know, 20% verse or something like that when I, when I use it. And I'm thinking like, hey, I'm giving this dude a little bit of verse. Maybe that increases his damage. Maybe that's worth it. I don't know. Uh, I've been using it a lot just because it does feel pretty good to see like 70 plus percent damage increase. Uh, and uh, maybe you want to try it as well. I don't know. But either way, I was a little disappointed that it didn't work with... Uh, the verse amp. I thought that if I used it, it would amplify it and then split the verse and give everybody else more too. Then it would be really good. But anyway, uh, this trinket is just like, I feel like this is like the most boring trinket in the game. <laughs> I've never used this trinket once, uh, but crit is good for offense, right? So I don't know, maybe uh, those those offensive minded players out there, you might want to think about this. I mean, you get it on 475, maybe it's something to think about. To be honest, crit that this light in the expansion has gotten, you know, there's some value to it, I think, with, uh, you know, high parry. The problem is you get a lot of DR, if you get, like, you know, if you ever had, like, tons and tons of crit, like, the difference between verse amp and crit amp would be, like, astronomical, because the way parry gets DR'd after a certain period from crit, yeah, you, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, I've never tried it, but maybe you guys have, I doubt it, but <laughs> I don't think crit is excellent for Blood DK one way or the other, whether you're talking about offense or defense. I think for the most part, uh, when you're looking at offense, people are looking for trinkets that do an upfront amount of damage that they could amplify with versatility. And that's probably, you know, why you've seen things like some of those dungeon trinkets become so valuable. So let's go through some other trinkets, okay? I will start with Nihilotha, but there's some honorable mentions I want to give elsewhere. Um, so uh, you probably, um, hopefully you're doing Nihilotha on your DK because there's a lot of potential power to be gained in there, but uh, there's some very interesting trinkets. In fact, I think there's five really interesting trinkets in Nihilotha, which is, I think is a little rare. Uh, but the first one is Humming Black Dragon Skill. Now, this is from Rathion, so if you're going to do Mythic, this is the first trinket you're going to get. And it's an interesting trinket because it's a very... <sighs> I don't want to say too much about this trinket because I don't use it anymore and I don't want people to get the wrong opinion, but I really like this trinket for a, a bunch of reasons, okay? Um, but yeah, realistically, I don't use this trinket anymore and I, I don't think I would use this trinket anymore now that we're going full versatility. I think um, the reason I thought it was good was, you know, at, at one point I was like, oh, um, a 475 trinket is always going to be really good because of the extra strength. Strength is a great staff for Bloody K, of course. Strength is a great staff for everybody. But um, I thought, like, hey, this is a good trinket. I still think it's a fine trinket. It's kind of like on the Razan's eye list, right? That's why I'm hesitating to say much about it, because it, now I look at it as, like, a, this is, like, a very mediocre trinket. But it is an interesting trinket, because it's a 475 trinket that you could effectively get for, like, immediately stepping into the raid. And it increases your speed a little bit. You know, I like speed. So, anyway... Um, all right, we're going to skip this one. We're going to come back to this one. We're going to go to Sigil of Warding, and I'm going to skip that one because Sigil of Warding is the one that we want to talk about first, okay? So Sigil of Warding, this is off Mott, third boss. Has Shexel Vaz as well, so good target for Blood DK. Your skin hardens, absorbing 2,500 and blah, blah, blah. That's whatever. The item level doesn't matter. Taking magic damage increases the remaining absorption by a decent amount. And in the duration by two seconds, up to a maximum of blah, blah, blah. So I used this trinket a lot in the beginning of the season. And I found like it was pretty good for, uh, 
you know, because corruption, I felt like it was really good for corruption. Anytime that a corruption proc would happen while I was about to take a big hit, you know, it makes the absorb bigger. But the problem is it's got a two minute cooldown. Okay, so look at the number, 2,506. And obviously, you no, know, it could potentially go up to another, it can go up to like, looks like over like six, just say 600K. Okay, so it could be like a 600K absorb. I don't think that would ever happen in reality, but it's possible that that does happen. I don't think I've, I, it would be hard for that to happen because you'd have to take so little magic damage that it would be increasing without like taking damage off the shield, right? But anyway, realistically, you're gonna have a couple hundred thousand absorb, like 300, 400,000 max every two minutes. So that's, a, again, two minute CD, it's a decent trinket because it's a large absorb, but same thing like Machimba's. It's kind of just a worse, Mach it's almost just a worse Machimba's because that CD was lower. Now, let's take a look at this trinket. Now, again, the problem is the item level is different, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, this is from Nazoth, so everything he drops is higher item level than everything Mop drops. Um, but that actually helps because a lot of people probably are doing Mythic, but they're not killing Mythic Nazoth quite yet. If you are killing Mythic Nazoth, then this trinket is just ridiculous. But you see the difference already. So it's 10 item levels higher. And here's the numbers, okay? So anyway, reduce the damage you take by 80% for 8 seconds until your Psychic Shell has taken whatever total amount of damage that is. Okay, now that's a convoluted way to say that it makes you reduce damage. Um, because at one point, this trinket was a little different. They changed it. They nerfed it. They I don't... It, it, they. I don't know, I'm not that well versed on how the semantics of this trinket work. But here's the most important part. While in Nihilotha, and based on your corruption resistance, the amount of damage reduction you receive is further reduced by up to 50%. So, let's talk about that, because what that means is, in the raid, of course, it's better. But guess what? For some reason, it works in 5 mans too, in certain situations. One of those situations is the last boss. Every time you fight a last boss, it counts you as being in Nihilotha. I can only imagine that's intentional. It's some kind of like interaction that they put in there to make this trinket, and I don't know if there's other trinkets like this in the game, better. Um, but it also works every time you're in the obelisks. So when you're doing the season four Mythic Plus affix, you're kiting these guys around, you're getting hit by the tank breaker, you're getting hit by the blob. You could use this trinket and it will be up to 50% more than it should be. And you could really see the difference. You could really see the difference, especially with Verse and now Vamp Blood and all that. It goes up real high. This trinket is extremely good. And I feel like I would use this in any situation that I am going to be needing another on-demand defensive CD. And I think that everybody should feel like they could use something like that. Even the people who are going full defense, I think, or full offense, I think this trinket is something that you'd be surprised at how valuable it can be. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is that you could get a lot of value out of it in the obelisk. So it's a one minute CD, first of all. It's perfect, like we've been talking about. It's it's a lower CD and it's a very good defensive CD. Um, it's getting like randomly buffed in areas that you might need it the most, right? Like oftentimes you're fighting an obelisk, it's some of the most danger in the dungeon for the tank because you have to be hiding it or you know dealing with its affixes like how the spiders like on bolster they all get stronger you know what i mean um so yeah there's a fair amount of damage uh, being taken one way or the other in the obelisk and of course there's the tank breaker obelisk so it's a good cd for that too but then of course the last boss last boss is often like a run defining situation you might get to the last boss and you might have to make a big play you might be tanking um, wait, maybe even more than one uh, uh, lieutenant on the last boss. So I feel like this trinket is a really good pick. And uh, up until recently, I used it for every single key I did. And the only reason I changed was because of Justice Howler. And one more trinket that we still have yet to talk about. Uh, but anyway, we still have two more here. We'll talk about these two. These two drop off raw dance. So let's take a look at these trinkets. Now this is a lot of versatility on a trinket. It's actually a lot. Uh, your spells and abilities have a chance to shroud you in void, absorbing uh, a small amount of damage for 15 seconds. Your critical strike is increased by blah, 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 while this shroud persists. So this is the problem with this trinket. That shroud, it doesn't really like to persist. It seems to go away really quick. And of course, that's because I'm playing a blood DK. So basically, the second it pops, you're going to lose all that crit. 
Now, it's interesting because it's got a lot of versatility on it. So I'm kind of surprised that other people aren't at least thinking about it. Maybe they have and they've tried it and they found it to be uh, inadequate. Uh, I do not have a 475 version. We're killing Rada now. So if I do get it, I might try it um, just because it's got verse on it. But realistically, I don't think like a trinket that literally, like, I mean, it's the absorb is not the, the, the thing that you write home about. It's supposed to be the crit, right? Like you're meant to get this trinket and it's meant to give you a lot of critical strike for a while. And then a small absorb as well. Like it's meant to be like, ah, you can get some defense or maybe you get some offense. But this is no, it doesn't work that way. You literally just get a small amount of defense from this trinket. So it's like, is that amount of shielding good? I don't know. I've not tried it at a high item level and I've not used it like really at all. So if I get a 475 version, I might try it. This is the one trinket that I feel like I still don't know the actual like where I feel on this trinket. But realistically, when I tried it on Heroic, it was just way too small of an absorb. It was like 5% or less of my overall healing. And the crit buff was up like freaking like 3% of the dungeon. So uh, I don't think I would ever use this trinket. But it does have an interesting two set. While in Nihilotha, your spells and abilities have a chance to draw an orb of Vita and void towards you. Collecting the orb increases your strength. So it's basically like the Rod Den mechanic. I mean, I don't, I've never seen this. I've literally never seen this. If I ever get both trinkets, I might run a couple dungeons just to see what it looks like. But yeah, realistically, Wall and Nihilotha probably applies again to the same situations we were just talking about. I don't know if that would ever be good, but you never know. Maybe it's an interesting interaction. Maybe it's worth looking at, even if it's just visually. But the reason that most people think about this set is because of this piece. Now you already see uh, yeah, haste and verse. So these would be really good stats for Bloody K if you could use both of them. But this trinket is just better. It's just like over budget, okay? And the reason that that is is because it's such a high haste. Like, look, okay. So here, here this is this is why I hesitated on the Rathion trinket here. You see that number? Increasing your haste by one thousand five hundred and twenty-five. And then you could look at um, Justice Howler. You see Justice Howler on the screen too. Granting you one, so that that's actually almost the same as Justice Howler, and it's not a two-minute CD. It's really good, <laughs> but of course, you know Justice Howler is realistically going to be over two thousand, maybe closer to three thousand if I had even more verse amp on. But the real thing here is that it grants your party members haste too. So th you could see this trinket is just literally over budget. I mean, at four forty-five item level, it's granting almost probably more stats than a four sixty-five trinket you know what i mean so that's the reason that people look at this trinket as so good it's just over budget it just gives you more more haste it gives everybody stats as well and, and that's really valuable in a five man but then so again compare it to this you see this increasing your haste by 402 and then your speed for 15 seconds so on paper like just just looking at it it's like oh my god this trinket is like five times better than another trinket that's in the raid but the difference is this proc is like really big and like kind of infrequent but this proc is like up all the time so i thought these two together were like a really good combo at first but you know i do actually have a um, a leech vita and like you know others have said like it doesn't even matter it's so good even at 460 that it's still better than every other trinket in the game and you, you might be right honestly like that might be the case but for me, it's like, what, what do I... I thought we didn't want haste. I got, I'm still kind of confused on the whole situation with haste, honestly. I think most people just get a lot of their haste from procs, so they feel like they don't need it, and they focus on full verse because corruption's power and, and the, the, the amp there. But realistically, I'm still confused why we care about haste at all now. So I think that this is more just like, it's just over budget. That's why people would use it. And actually, you, you can see the difference here. Uh, this is an interesting thing. Uh, the difference between, uh, even let, let's just look at Mythic too. So it's 1,525 for me and 268 for others. That's the normal version. The heroic version is 1,600 and 282. So like, yeah, it's not much more, honestly. And then let's take a look at Mythic. The Mythic version is 1,674 and 295. So again, not much more. 240 haste on the actual thing, 229 haste. So. Realistically, yeah, Jig said this. He, he might be right. Like this trinket might be better than the mythic version because just because it's got leech on it. So, anyway, that is every trinket um, from the current season. I do want to talk about something else. There's a couple other things that we got to talk about. Okay, there are trinkets from last season that are still interesting. 
Uh, I don't... I'm not going to talk about these two because I think that they've outgrown their use, but maybe there's people out there still using them. If there is, let me know. Uh, but these trinkets have not outgrown their use, and they are still incredibly strong. I still have one in my bags, a 450 version of it. I got it, uh, luckily, when we were doing Ashvane. And I'll tell you what, man. It's a very powerful heal. I think it still does more healing than most other trinkets. Like, I haven't done it in a while, but I used to compare it to other trinkets. And if you remember, it used to win a lot at 445. So if there was a way that you, you know, what's the maximum that you can get? 455? If you can get a 455, because the Titan Forge is only to whatever season, season three's Titan Forge was. If you can get a 455 trinket, this might be the best trinket in the game for actual self-healing. Uh, and another one is this one too. This is really, really good. So these are old trinkets. Hopefully everybody knows what these are by now. If you don't know what these are, you've probably lost your chance of getting them, frankly. Like, I have them from actual progression, but realistically, I don't know what the breakpoint is on them. Like, if I had a Ford 15 version, would it be good? I doubt it. I mean, maybe it would be, I don't know. But this one especially because I've always had a good island bubble version of it, got it really uh, early in our progression on Ashvane and in our kills on Ashvane. Um, I always like this trinket. I use it a lot in five mans and it's, I feel like it's really valuable, but you know, you have to compare it to things like spore pods. You have to compare it to um, lingering shell. And now unfortunately you have to compare it to something else, which is a very strong comparison to make. So uh, there's EP. There's also one other raid, um, which has a trinket that I find interesting. Now this is season two. So we're getting really far down the rabbit hole now, but this, this trinket, I'd be very, very, very interested to see how it plays in the world that we're in right now. Because this trinket used to be my top healing overall. Like, besides Death Strike. This trinket used to crush the charts when I used this. I used to get so much on-demand healing from it. It's a one-minute CD. I feel like if I had any semblance of a strong item level on this trinket, of course, I didn't do Mythic. That's the problem, right? And nobody ever does Mythic. So, like, just to get a good trinket, you'd have to do Mythic, and it'd probably have to Titan Forge. But if you got it, if you got it, somebody's got a 430, 440, 445 version of this trinket out there somewhere, I'm begging you to show me what it looks like in five minutes. Because when I used this in season two, it was insane how much healing it could do. It would literally, like I'd be at 50% health and it would top me off. So just something to think about. And there's one other honorable mention, not this trinket, uh, not this raid. <laughs> Don't look at anything from that raid. That raid had terrible trinkets. This one, another honorable mention. This trinket is up all the time. And again, really old trinket, even worse item level. But I used this in season three and it was still more healing than Urchin. Let's put it this way. I used this trinket in season three alongside Urchin and it did more healing than Urchin. And I had a 425 version of this, I think. So a 425 did more healing than a 450 trinket, which I am now talking about doing more healing than every other trinket I have currently. So it's been a long time since I tested any of this. It might sound absurd, it probably is. I don't know if the reality is that still. But I'll tell you what, if I had this version, this trinket at a 445 or whatever the highest, 455 version, I'm not sure I'd ever take it off. Interesting. Now, we've gone through every trinket that can drop in the game, but there's still one trinket that I have on that you might not know what that is. We're gonna talk about that trinket now. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm wearing it. It is the pocket-sized computation device. This is a trinket that is effectively build your own trinket from the Mechagon outdoor content. And uh, how it works is, let's see, um, how it works is these are empty by default. It's like gem slots or whatever. You could put anything you want in here, any of these things, okay? Uh, you can build your own trinket and it's actually a very interesting trinket. Now, in season three, it was a really interesting trinket because a red card called Cyclotronic, whatever it was called, it did a lot of damage and I think a lot of people used it and maybe people still do use it. I've seen people use it in different situations. I think a Windwalker Monk still uses it or something, but um, it's a huge amount of damage and it doesn't like, you know what I mean? Like for a tank, it was just a huge amount of damage because it allowed you to do just like a burst of damage in a two minute window and it was really good for Ash Vein, let's put it that way. But anyway, instead of that, we're now taking a different red, no longer looking at Cyclo, we're looking at Trajectory Analysis. This is a very interesting red card, and I've only recently stumbled across this. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this red card. Taking physical damage grants 30 dodge for six seconds. This affects stats. So 
basically, every time you take a melee swing, you have more dodge for a little bit. This stacks, you know how many times? To 99%, or to 99 stacks. When I had, not 99%, it was bugged at one point. It did stack over 100% dodge. They fixed that a long time ago. Either way, the effect stacks to 99. When I have 99 stacks, I have like 30% dodge. That's pretty, pretty friggin' good if you ask me. And the thing about dodge is, it really isn't something that I feel the game is balanced around anymore. If you played the game, you know, like eight years ago, like I did, you would remember a time when what they called it was combat table coverage, CTC cap, meaning a combination of parry, block, dodge, and maybe armor or avoidance of some other sort. I think there was four things. It's been a long time. But basically, all of these things would equal 100% coverage. So every time you got meleeed, you had some coverage for it. That was how active mitigation worked in the old days. You geared for it. Dodge and parry were the two main ways you did that. Dodge is pretty much gone from the game now, right? There's no way to get dodge. There's nothing, you know, dodge is now something that is not basically functional. You can't get it as a blood decay at all, other than the essence or you get 3% just baseline, right? Just That's just how it works, but see, it doesn't even like, the stats even look weird, right? So I think, and this is, you know, just stupid circumstance that I'm coming through, but it's like, I feel like having high parry and high dodge as a blood decay would revolutionize the way the class played. If instead of like, you know, getting trucked and having to constantly worry about death strike, if like, a fair amount of the times you were gonna get hit, you didn't get hit, the class would probably be looked at as a lot better, right? So I think this is a, a, a huge thing, and I'm gonna tell you where I got this idea from. This is not my idea, okay? I got it from the number one blood DK in the world. The guy's name is Kairasis, he deserves the credit, okay? Look him up on Raider.io. This dude is very skilled, I am impressed, as, as honestly. Every time I watch this dude play DK, I'm like, wow. He is playing a different spec than I am, that's for damn sure. Uh, and he uses this trinket. I actually, uh, I didn't talk to him personally, but Sizemwell, good friend of the channel, he actually spoke to him personally about this trinket. And he said that he rattled off a bunch of reasons why he thinks this is the best trinket in the game for Serious Mythic Plus. Now, of course, he's doing 25s, okay? We're not here to talk about where the difficulty quotient is for five mans and when you should use which types of trinkets. But I'll tell you this. Since I've been using this trinket, I have felt a dramatic change in my survivability in five mans and of course i don't play the spec great like obviously especially when looking at the other monitor half the time in dungeons like i do in keys i do make a lot of mistakes so this this trinket allows me to not have to be punished by those mistakes as severely because over time i will get extra chances to not get hit by these mistakes you understand and really the big thing is on a big trash week like we had two weeks ago or whatever it was now or I don't remember, but yeah, the big trash week teaming fortified, that was just like the king, right? Another great week for this, necrotic. The more times you dodge or parry an ability, the less times you get a necrotic stack. So I feel like this is a really, really, really good trinket to just kind of keep in your bags. Even if you don't want to use it, even if you're thinking about full offense, there might be a time where it's a very valuable trinket. And there's another reason it's a very valuable trinket. It's because of you can get 180 versatility on it as well. Now this yellow card is something that you can literally get dozens of. Um, in Mechagon, there's a thing that you could use, you trade like a box or whatever, the spare part box, you trade one of those in and it gives you a yellow card. Now, there's something else to consider here. Um, the, uh, let's talk about acquiring these things, okay? So at one point, all of this shit could Titan Forge, okay? Apparently it can't anymore. I, I don't actually have 100% proof of that, but I'm pretty sure Jix is right. At, at some point, they changed it. It must have been season four's beginning. They changed it so none of these things could Titanforge. Like, these things could also just drop. The, the way I got this, do you want to know how I got this? I farmed Mythic Zero trash. That's how I did it. I went into Mechagon. Took me, I think, four full clears of, of uh, Mechagon. I cleared out all the trash in Mechagon. Took me, like, two and a half days of play. Not, not like, 24 hours, but, like, two play sessions each day, right? So... I, I went in there, cleared out all the trash, very easy, just put on like full, you know, AOE, DPS gear, crush all the trash, easy mode. But it took me a while to get it. And then when I got one, I did, I kept going, because I was like, maybe I'll get a different yellow card, maybe I'll do, I did it again, I got a second one in the same run, so I was very lucky. Um, but I was thinking, oh, maybe I could get a Titanforge version. So I kept farming, kept farming, kept farming, 
And then Jix was like, yo, dude, stop wasting your time. It cannot Titan Forge anymore. He's probably right. But at one point, it could Titan Forge. And he said that he even had a 450 version of it. So if somehow you're out there and you have a 450 version or something higher than 430 version of this, it probably grants even more dodge. I can't, I can't be sure because I can't get it myself, but I'd imagine <laughs> it grants even more dodge. So imagine if that granted 40 dodge and you got 99 stacks of that, then you'd have what? Like 40% dodge? I don't know. But yeah, that would be very interesting. So anybody out there with that, I think you should think about it. Um, I really like this trinket. I've not taken it off since I put it on. Um, it's hard to quantify. I feel like you would need like a, a detailed log analysis of it, but I feel like it's a very interesting patch for Blood DK's biggest problems right now, and that is potentially getting hit in a way that you are swarmed by auto attacks, swarmed by physical damage intake, and you know maybe CDs aren't up or you are you know short on runic power or something like that. And I think it, I think it's really good. And of, of course, the fact that you can get you can put versatility on it as well. S signals a really good trinket here for the verse amp meta. So this is completely useless. The blue card is just like a random a fix thing. It's like nothing that I don't think there's anything. This might be the most pertinent one, honestly. Your swim speed is increased because it's like wh when you're doing shrine, sometimes you're in the water. <laughs> like there's no other better one, I don't think so. That is my opinion on every trinket in the game. I don't think I've missed any. There's like PvP trinkets. I don't PvP, so I'm not gonna give my opinion on them. I don't have an opinion on them. I don't know what they look like. Um, I will say though, that I have seen Kairasis actually use a PvP trinket that has a lot of versatility on it. Uh, so maybe that's something you wanna consider. I've never, I've, I've never used it. I don't have it. I never even know it existed. Uh, but yeah, there are like strong stat PvP trinkets out there. Uh, but otherwise, that is my thoughts on trinkets. That is it for the expansion. We will not make another video on trinkets. Again, this is not a guide. This is not me telling you how to play your class. Uh, you can play your class however you think is best. As long as you are the one who thought of it, you should feel completely, yeah, feel free to do that. You know what I mean? I don't want anybody to think like, oh, this guy's using these trinkets. I'm going to use them too. That's not what I'm trying to do here. But I did want to make this video because a lot of people on the stream ask me about trinkets. So there is the concise, relatively 42 minute video, concise answer. So thanks for watching. We're going to see you guys in the next one.